damage. I bet you can. Okay. Hello. Welcome to the family reunion recap. So happy to have all of you here. We do hope that we can you can hear us. Um, we are having a little bit of a mic situation. Um, my name is Stacy Miller. I'm the team leader for Keller Williams Consultants, and we are coming from Franz Road in Dublin. Okay, okay. I'm Lori Lynn. I've pretty much been with Keller Williams for 19 years. Have a team. There you go. Uh, I'm Ryan Conway. I've been with Keller Williams for 13 years. I'm like that. I've been an agent for 16. Uh, this is my third family reunion. Well, third in person family reunion. I did it virtually at once as well. Okay. My name is Emily Tatman. Uh, I've been with Keller Williams for two years, uh, licensed for almost 12. I have a team in the firm Foundation Co. Uh, with my partner, Kyle Shaw. Thank you, Kyle. And this was my first family reunion, so I'm very excited. And you had fun. So much fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Emily O. Yeah. I'm Teresa Kenny, and I've been with Keller Williams since 2010, and this was my seventh and best family reunion I've been to. It was a lot of fun. And learned a ton. Um, so we also have Stephanie here. She needs to introduce herself. Stephanie, are you on? Yes. Hi, I'm Stephanie Kellerman, and I am in Lexington, Kentucky, and Nicholasville. I have a, a mega agent office in Nicholasville. Um, I've been with KWF 15 years, and I think this was my eighth family reunion, if I counted right. Wow. So you'll have lots to say. And then Nikki? Hi. Yes, I am also Lexington, Versailles, Central Kentucky. This was my fourth family reunion. I uh, did one of the virtual as well when they shut everything down. Um, so yeah, I'm excited. And my mom is here with me and she didn't go this year, but she's here to take lots of notes. Hi, mom. Well, thanks for being here. <laughs> Um, we have one, two, three, four, five, six of us on the panel. Don't forget about mom. And mom, mom. on the panel too. Um, so we're just going to do a little bit of a round table here and talk about some of our ahas. Um, I think there was almost 16,000 um, agents that came. It was four nights. And um, there was everything from a leadership session to a vision speech to charging the storm and the state of the company. Um, so it was to be pretty fluid. Does anybody have some aha moments they'd like address off of leadership session from Gary Keller? I'll say who all attended that one? I do. Um, Teresa, do you want to share yours or do you want no, me to share I, mine? You go ahead. Okay, so Gary Keller talked about in our society today, uh, every everyone's looking for a hack. You want to hack this, make things easier. Um, and he gave us five truths can't hack. And I thought they were pretty profound. So I'm just going to go over those with you all. Um, the first one is the closer you are to the truth, the simpler things get. And he elaborated saying you can't get bored with the simplicity because the models will never change. And I know sometimes lead generation at its basic level gets a little boring and that's your job, essentially is what he said. Um, the second one is to change your life, you must change your identity. So you can't keep being who you are to become who you want to be. Diluted, the third one is diluted focus results in diluted results, especially shift. The fourth is the key building a really big business is to get there first and block out the others. And the example he gave is so easy for us to understand. So if there's a row of trees and there's one in the middle and it grows tall, its branches span out. And then what happens? Well, it blocks the sun from reaching the others and they don't grow as tall. And so that's how you build a big business is to get there first and block all the others out. 
However, you have to be careful not to lose your advantage in a recession. So sometimes an ice storm will come and the tree, if it's not strong, branches will fall off and then it loses its edge as being the biggest tree in the forest. And so just be careful to kind of bulletproof your business, not to lose the advantage in a recession. And then the fifth one, relationships that matter are a daily practice. So business relationships, client relationships, friend relationships, any relationship that you want to continue to be strong needs to be nurtured daily. That's all about that. Very good. And the other thing that he said, I don't know why it resonated with me, but he mentioned procrastination was arrogance. Do you remember that? That was Ryan Holiday. Oh. Yeah, that, that was my one of my big uh, <laughs> that was one of my big takeaways. It was yeah, it was Ryan Holiday. So <laughs> not Gary. Oh. Good. It's good leverage. Okay, Gary. Teresa. Did you have um, something from leadership? No. From leadership. Oh. Basically, I I thought what Gary said about the five hacks. I mean, Gary, you can go to the family reunion and go to every session, but really it always just comes down to the same things with him. And it's just keep it simple and do what you're supposed to do every day. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have a successful business. There is so many <clears throat> other things that are going on around and it's always fun to see what projects <laughs> are and what how you can get there. I feel like he's always trying to provide value to help us get there. But at the same time, if you if you didn't do anything but what Stephanie just said, pick up your database and call them, you're gonna have a business. How many people should you have in that database, Teresa? Well, <laughs> I mean, if I want to make like six figures or something like that. 101. I'm going to get to that later. I mean, my big takeaway is from the whole thing is control what you can control. Gary said it. Ryan Holiday said it. Molly Fletcher said it. It it You can control your database and you can control how many times you call your database. And you can control what you say to that database. So um, that's the secret sauce there. But the the number that Keller Williams is really pushing right now is if you have 201 contacts in your database and you touch them on a systematic fashion and pick up the phone and call them four times a year, which would be once a season, you on average will make over $120,000 a year which is awesome. And there's nothing fancy about that. It's just a very simple process to do. Simple, but not easy. Okay, go ahead. Um, my favorite part of the CEO Summit was actually hearing from Mo Anderson. She's amazing. That was my first time hearing her live, and she's just a doll. Um, and she said a few things that stuck with me. Um, one of her quotes was, get rid of your stinking thinking and lead generate. So I thought that was really good. Um, and her other was a bit of a biblical reference, but she said, if Gideon can do it, so can I. And just connect the dots that there's opportunity in adversity. Very good. Thank you, Emily. Anyone else? Leadership? No. On the leadership? So do you want to say something about leadership? I wasn't there. Oh, okay. I wasn't there. <laughs> no, I wasn't there. I just said <laughs> Okay. Now, now I lost my train. Thanks, Ryan. Okay. Um, one of the things that... Um, I thought was really important is that standards matter. So, you know, showing up late, um, you know, not being ready, maybe not having your MLS sheet printed out, um, be there early, be there at the house. Um, you know, I get in a hurry too, and I get there, you know, right on time, but you really shouldn't be there right on time. You should be there four or five minutes early at least. That way, if there's something you need to deal with, what if your key box isn't working? In five in five minutes, you can make a phone call and get your uh, phone working. Um, same thing with marketing is don't keep following like the shiny penny. Stick to what you're doing because it's recognizable and it's a standard. And if you keep changing your standards, then people are going to think, well, you know, they can't get it together. They're always changing something. So to me, it, what hit home the most was opportunity uh, is standards do matter. There no transaction is worth your reputation. 
no transaction. Mm -hmm. And another important part that I got out of it is we are supposed to be encouraging other people to succeed, not taking them down like, oh, well, you tried that. It didn't work. Oh, well, sorry about your luck. You know, I know that that didn't work for you, but you know what? Why don't we tweak it and try this again? And Keller Williams is phenomenal at helping each other. So if, if there are things that people need help with, that's what your leadership is for. That's what I got out of it. I love it, Lori. Thank you. Um, okay, so how about we hit on charge the storm in regards to being the buffalo? Would that be okay to go next? Um, one part there is the buffalo versus the bear. You remember uh, Gary talked about the buffalo heads into the storm and comes out on the other side sooner, where a bear will hunker down and wait for the storm to be over. And in family reunion, it was pretty much talking about the shift. Have any feedback on that? I was going to say, it, me it means more than just the market shift, too. It really applies to anything you got to deal with. So if you got to have like a fierce conversation with somebody, it's in your organization, your life, anything like that. You just try to hunker down and wait for things to figure themselves out or avoid an issue. It just persists and it goes longer. Whereas it's better to take that approach. They said the buffalo is like a strange animal. That it's the only one that actually, yeah, it just keeps on going into it so it can get out and get through it faster and get to the other side of things. So charge into whatever the problem is. Don't let it meander. Don't let it linger and stuff. But whatever the problem is, face it head on and do it swiftly. Otherwise, you're going to be condemned to deal with it for longer. Else? Yeah, I'm going to add something to that. Um, as far as the buffalo is concerned with the ship, we, again, it's back to what you can control. We can't control the ship. The feds are going to raise interest rates. There's nothing we can do about that except our response to it. And the more you educate yourself and understand what's happening out there, the better advantage you have. And again, it's picking up your database and reaching out, whether it's through social media or actually, I mean, you could make, I know Jeff Mesmer's here. He does an excellent job with social media, educating people about what's happening with the real estate market. So there's a lot of different ways to do it. Pick what works for you. Be you for sure. Like stay true to yourself, but figure out a way that you can get the message out there about to people about what's happening with the market. Number two in charging the storm was playing the long game, an evergreen mindset versus a situational mindset. And the evergreen mindset knows that change is inevitable and the, and the economy has cycles. This mindset plays the long game. The situational mindset lives in the moment and is constantly thrown off by change. If the market is good, then business is good. If the market is bad, then business is bad. That mindset plays the short game. So the goal was to play the long game because the hills and the valleys are going to happen. Absolutely. Anybody on that one? Um, Go okay. ahead. Please, please. I have please. six steps to doing more. Um, he, that's the next thing I think he talked about. Um, and so the six steps to doing more is to be positive and see possibility. A lot of what gets you through a downturn, I survived and some of you did 07, 08, and I had a very different mindset then than I do now. Um, and so your mindset is everything. You continually play offense is number two. Mm -hmm. Number three is listen more than ever. Number four is live outside your comfort zone. Again, number five, focus what you can control and then live with certainty in uncertain times. Awesome. Those are good. Uh, number three in charge of the storm is don't wish it away. He made an analogy, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Can anybody elaborate on that? <laughs> what he was saying at that time was like, when you're dealing with the problem, like it, it'll be better in two years. We're gonna just get better. You're like, oh, yeah. ride that out and get to that. and and. and get so far ahead of yourself that time just slips by faster with that. He realized when you're doing that, you're also going to, he said, you're going to lose two years with his dog, two years with his aging parent, two years with his wife, his kids, all that stuff. So if we're trying to just wish away the bad that's going on, we're also wishing away a lot of the good, the process with that time. 
So don't do that. Still stay present where your feet are planted at and deal with the adversity in that moment instead of just trying to wish it away. Yeah, to that point, you don't really grow unless you're feeling a little bit of pain. Everybody grows after they had some adversity and figured out how to, you'll be that much better in the next shift if you work your way through this one. Just like exercise, you tear the muscles so the muscle comes back stronger. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right after okay, you're a fitness challenge, a couple more days. Yes, <laughs> I'm fitness challenge. That's up my alley. Okay, number four for charge storm. Nikki, do you have anything? Um, I had what Gary had constantly said. I think of change or a challenge as a strategy, not as a difficulty. So you've just got to train change your strategy of like how you're going uh to conquer this new market. And then um like fill the top of your funnel. Um, if you fill the top of your funnel, you'll hit your numbers. And it's also uh, change your numbers, like change your model. Yeah. To that point though, Ryan, we actually got to listen to Ryan Holiday as well. And he wrote on um, Everyday Stoic and the obstacle is the way. And his whole theory is the obstacle is so the pretend the shift is the obstacle, that's the thing that is going to help you become the better person. Like, you have to work your way through that obstacle. Thanks for reminding me of that. It was good. Number four is do more shift into do more drive. The shift is an economy of less. There's less opportunities in this marketplace. So that's what he talked about. You know, some of these agents are going to wean right out. Um, and then ultimately, there's more opportunity for us. They are. I have a good point about that too. Yeah. So one of the things that uh, Gary talked about during this time was to go deep into your relationships, stay in your lane. So do more, but stay in your lane. So if your business comes from referrals, from family referrals, friend referrals, focus on those relationships and continue to build those relationships stronger don't take those for granted. And the thing that came up over and over and over, and it's crazy because all these years, these different years that I've done the family reunion, at the end of it, it's always the same key. Stay in the bait, go back to basics, mm -hmm. lead generate, fill your database. And it doesn't change. It was the same way 20 years ago, 15 years ago, 10 years ago. It's the same way. But as we're in this shift, if you take the time to really spend having a conversation with your client, with your friends that are in your database, and you don't have to call them up and say, hey, do you know somebody that might be wanting to sell their house? Are you thinking about selling your friend, your family? It's not about that. It's saying, hey, you know, I... When you got the loan four years ago, your interest rate was whatever it was. And I know interest rates are higher now, but actually I think it might be a possibility for you to refinance. And we have so much data, we can tell when everybody refinances, so you know. Another thing is you could talk to that client and say, you know, we had, um, I, I know that you've got a couple of kids that are graduating high school. I know that you graduated from OSU. You've always talked about your kids going to OSU. Is that still the plan? Oh, it is. Well, because it might be a good opportunity to take the equity out of your house and buy an investment property. So it's it's getting deep into those relationships. Um, well, there, go ahead. Go right ahead. Um, I was just going to piggyback off that. What Molly Fletcher had said is, we do transactions, but we are relational. Um, and building strong relationships is the business that we are, we are in. And one thing I loved is she said, you better be better than your problems. Well, and her speech was quite, you know, she was powerful. Yeah, powerful. Thank you, Ryan. When she found out after having a five-month-old that she was, pregnant with twins at the doctor's office, but had a big appointment with an athlete afterwards. And she could have gone into that appointment going, oh my gosh, you won't believe what I just found out. I'm having twins. And she could have went on and on and on and on about it, but she changed her mindset 
because that appointment was about him and the relationship and what was going on with him at that time. And then ultimately he ended up soaring and, but. It was actually, it was a coach. It was Doc Rivers, yeah. Rams and that... Falls basketball. Yeah, so okay. um, yeah, real big game. Yeah. All right, sure. She, go ahead. I, I want to mention about Molly Fletcher because she was just absolutely amazing. She's basically the female Jerry Maguire. Uh, just her face and that adversity of being one of the few females in that industry, maybe even the only one. Uh, but her takeaways and perspective from that was incredible. She talked about just talking, I think, B Butch Harmon, who is a coach for like Tiger Woods and a lot of top athletes. She asked him the question about what is the difference between the top like 20% or not the top 20 of all performers and everybody else. And you see this all the time with sports. Somebody's big deal in high school or college and they go to pros and they just disappear and you have people come from out of nowhere. And she said the difference between them is the top performers recover from adversity the fastest. So they just, it doesn't sit in an own space in their head sitting there longer. So one of her tactics she said that she uses too is to keep a smile file on your computer or your device of just folder with emails, positive feedback, stuff like that. They'll keep you going and snap you out from any sort of adversity or challenge. And I have like one of my first pieces from my smile file here. If anyone's following me on our office Facebook page, hopefully I'll pull it up here. Oh, or I post on the family reunion thing. I just got to read this. I got this message from my wife um, while I was out there at the family reunion, a text of my eight-year-old daughter talking to my six-year-old son. She said, Kira just said to Declan, don't have a fixed mindset. Have a growth mindset. You can fix it. Change your attitude. <laughs> so the power, power of the things that you do. I saw that. That is so awesome. Way to like be building leaders. Exactly. So Ed Milad says it later in there about like what you're saying and, and acting and doing in front of your children has a major impact on your entire lineage, lineage to your kids, to their kids, and so on long after you're gone from this. So put yourself in that growth mindset. You owe it to all of them to do that for yourself and for them. Very nice. Very inspiring. We'll keep you right. <laughs> right that moment. That's right, Joe. Um. Okay, state of the company um, for 2023 um, really was about the MERA and the four laws of lead generation, um, building the database, which we can continue to talk about to a blue in the face, so that is the name of the game. And the smart plans will feed it every day, communicate it with, in a systematic way, and service all, service all the leads that come your way. Um, there is a level of urgency that's necessary with these leads because if you don't handle them in a timely fashion, the next agent across the street will. Um, so that, does anybody have to speak on that? Well, I just think my, me and my team, we do use command. And I think another theme was Gary even said it, you know, whether you use command or another CRM platform, like use whatever you're going to use. Um, we do use command, and what I love is that everything that's in the MREA book, because when I got licensed 11 years ago with another brokerage, the first book they gave me was this MREA <laughs> book by Gary Keller, and that should have been my first, <laughs> my first red flag, but needless to say, I was these are great ideas, but how do I implement it? All these touches and all these things, and why I love command is because it's literally built to put what the MRE says into practice. So it makes it really easy. And I like easy. And free. <laughs> yes, and, and free. free. And and free. free. I like free too. <laughs> free is good. Yeah. Well, and there was discussion about the smart plans and utilizing your tech support. And as we know, Jen Vickers for us um, is available all the time. And if it's not in person once a week, if she is um, live on Zoom, um, we were updating my digital business cards. I'm trying to get a little bit more techy. I have to say, I did TikTok one week, and then Emily got a digital business card for me. So I'm trying because I still do old school CRMs, and so I am diving into command um, for sure. Also, 
Well, I think they were really proud of the fact that command has come so far. It just, yeah. in the last six months, it has improved immensely. So if you haven't been on there lately, if you didn't get that from the office meeting, please get on command and see what it can do for you now, because it's really improved. Well, the other thing I want to say about command, there's a, there's a level of like, oh, command is this and command is that. It doesn't do this and doesn't do that. But one thing Gary will do, which I've learned, very quickly is that he will keep up with the market in every avenue as quickly as he can. And if it is launched out and not perfect, the feedback from all of the agents will help improve and then it will get better and better and better versus waiting till it's all really perfect and then launching it. And so he's not gonna delay. That's like when you're you have those people that plan the whole time and then never implement their plans so and that's a great point because they do like it works off of feedback so constantly providing feedback and you can even make suggestions on the site um all keller williams agents can so if there's and you can actually go in and vote so if there's a feature that you want and someone else has already posted it on the board the more likes it gets the higher it comes up the the yeah. list of uh, priority um at kwri so definitely check that out there's features that there aren't, they don't have that you want, or if you just browse through, sometimes you see things that you didn't even think of that you can like and hopefully get a little further up the list. I, I will say real quick that Gary said in his speech that there's only three real estate companies that own their own tech, which is us, Redfin, and Compass, um, which is, right. is huge that he has invested not only the resources, but the money that I cannot imagine what that took. And he also said that like, we were one of the fastest like CRMs and websites to ever launch with as much as it has. And he was very vocal and said, yeah, we fell flat on our face when we launched it, but they have gone very hard and very fast to make it what it is today, which to be a part of a company that owns their own and knowing that we can never be bought and our information can never be sold is big enough for me. Also, if you haven't downloaded Command Mobile on your phone, they talked a lot about Command Mobile, everything that it now does. You can go directly to the app and see your list of tasks, make a call within Command, and then it logs your conversation or that call in your contact record. And so it just makes it really easy if you put Command, the app on your home screen, and as you're driving or you're doing your lead generation, you can go straight through there and make your calls or send your text. And that way there's a record in there so that it, it really works like a CRM and you know what tasks you've completed. So that was a really big aha for me that I am gonna start implementing. One last thing on, you may get to command, and I'm sorry, I may be jumping ahead, but they have now created a feature that, and I don't know if it's available now or within the coming weeks, like all the things they launched are going to be available within the coming weeks, but you're able to like hit a button and all of your contacts in your phone are going to go into command. So instead of going through there and making sure all of them are right or <laughs> having your admin enter them one by one, now they're just in there, which is huge. And I think that you're right, Nikki. I think that's um, end of March, if I recall. Yeah. Right. Anything else? A class and parents just all do it at the same time. <laughs> right. Wouldn't that be awesome? Great, right, Deanna. Yeah. A couple other tech things that I'm excited about is we're all getting new agent sites, which will just be a new, updated, fresh design. Um, mm -hmm. But along with that, they're going to start integrating AI, um, both right. for the consumer websites and also for. Um, social media ad campaigns that you run through command. So I'm really excited for that. Yay. Yeah. Like that should be a lot. Anyone else on command? All right. Um, well, I wanted to give a little information in regards how uh, Keller Williams ranked um, in 2022. It was named to Franchise Business Review's list of best recession proof franchise for 2022 the entrepreneurial franchise 500 fastest growing franchises um it's one of the top franchise business reviews for satisfaction of veterans there we go satisfaction reward for veterans um consumers always come first career bliss ranked kw is number 14 on the list of happiest 
companies in 2023. Happy is important. Happy is yes. important. There, does anybody want to talk about happy and by let? Yeah, it was, a, it was a big theme for sure. I love hearing Ed Milet. I actually didn't really know too much about him. I mean, everyone was super excited, so I got excited and it was amazing. But um, I really just like that he focused on choosing happiness as a choice, but also that like the time is now, like don't wait, you know, a month or till after this shift or whatever your like stipulation is, like be happy today. Like life is really short. Like don't take that for granted. Um, I could talk for a long time about this. Like, well, sorry. another takeaway for that, I don't know what you guys thought about, um, you know, there was a level of not reinventing the wheel and, um, you know, we have, Mo Keller Williams has models and systems in place. And so you can take little avenues to tweak it for your business, but ideally you want to follow the models and the systems. And he compared it to McDonald's which is one of the largest franchise companies out there. And he said they have hamburgers and French fries just like everybody else. But what did they do that made it different? And he was like, well, first of all, they had a happy meal, right? It was like, everybody wants a happy meal. So everybody's happy. It was all about being happy. And then who's going to think that you're going to have a clown involved with <laughs> McDonald's? He was just talking about, imagine that in the boardroom, we're going to have a Ronald mcdonald be our mascot he probably got pretty they probably got pretty good pushback but our takeaway dana was like well that's the new adjective for consultants so we'll start saying yeah. happiness everywhere i think yeah. the, the theme with that right? is that mcdonald's owns the most real estate and also distributes the most food, food. in the u.s but what they don't sell hamburgers they sell happy, happy. Like they sell happiness they, yeah. sell, they make people happy yeah yes and fact even with high blood, even with high blood pressure and high blood cholesterol, everybody. Yeah. Um, I'll say about Ed uh, Mellet. He said, "You don't have a lack of vision. You have a lack of depth perception, and you think everything is too far away when everything is just one more step. Like if you go one more step above everyone else, you've hit it." Are we talking about Ed Milet now then? I mean, because I agree, Nikki, Ed Milet's book is Do One More. Yeah. So his whole theory is, and for all of you kids in February fitness challenge, is just to do one more. If you just did one more a little bit every day, if you just called one more client, over a longer period of time, that's going to add up to something substantial. It's going to add up to a listing in terms of real estate, in terms of in terms of physical fitness, if you're just doing one rep more than you think you can do, right. you're pushing yourself to that next level. And it's just, it's the difference between being regular and being extraordinary. I mean, but it's not something that's easy. Like it's very easy to say, but to actually, the ideas are wonderful, but the practicality is where you meet the metal, right? Like you really have to be disciplined to do that. Yeah, no, I agree. One more thing he said that every night uh, when you go to bed, don't write down like what you did that day, but what you're proud of. Um, I love it. And so that way you can see every day, like, and then you keep yourself accountable. Like, okay, yeah, I, I spent this much time with my family or I made this many calls, but you're proud of it instead of like your accomplishments of the day. Absolutely. Very good. Can I say one more thing that Ed Milet said? Are we going to come back to Ed Milet? No, no, no. My biggest takeaway, other than control the controllables, which is what Molly Fletcher said, which I think is awesome. If you just learn to control the controllables in your own life, you're going to be great. Ed Milet said something, though, that just stabbed me in the heart. And that was this. You are always making people feel something. Like yes. You're either making them feel good by acknowledging them or you're making them not feel so good or you might be encouraging them but you especially in sales I think you really have to be cognizant of what you're presenting and how you're making people feel it just it really got to me like I have to stop thinking about that because that's the whole world is about interaction <laughs> and connection and, and understanding one another and no matter what the sales product is that's all the other that's the overflow of it because it's really about the relationship right? oh, yeah. i wasn't there but what you're saying is true but if you're not happy 
there's no way you're going to pass that on or even you can't fake it you can't right so you can't give that to someone else you can take pain from someone but you can't give them unless you're really right. happy i think but even for people that are in pain oftentimes like ed my left story if you don't know it you should look it up it's on um, the googler uh, and it's on youtube but he's the son of an alcoholic which has in the course of time made him a very empathetic person he can read a room because he had to be able to read his dad when he came in the house every day is he drunk is he in a good mood? Is he in a bad mood? Do I need to hide the alcohol? Do I need to tell my mom to go hide? But this was when he was five years old. Right. He learned these skills at a very, very young age. So even still, when you're in pain, people that are in pain sometimes are can be extremely empathetic. You don't even, you're in so much pain, you don't even realize you're helping the other person because you're the only one taking the time to listen to them. Everybody else has probably blown them off. <laughs> Sorry. Well, and you never know what anyone is going through, period. Um, and one brief example, which is a little outside of family reunion, but because I was in Anaheim, I'm going to go ahead and tell it. I was in the suburban heading to the airport, and I was waiting for Teresa and her lovely husband, Brian, um, to come down from the hotel because I was a little bit early with the driver. Driver was probably in his mid-60s, owns now a limo company, and... We were chatting for a little bit and I don't know what I asked or what had transpired, but he had said, well, I lost my wife and children. Oh my God. And he was finishing the story and I was half listening because then I wanted to turn around and say, what happened to his wife and children? And he allowed me to ask. He said, do you mind if I ask? And he said, well, I lost my wife and children to a drunk driver. And I said, when? And he said, nine, nine years ago. And I said, oh, my gosh, you know, and he said it was a Wednesday afternoon at two o'clock in the afternoon. It was my wife, and my three daughters, and it was just he was going 60 miles an hour. The daughters were all between 21 and 25 years old. Oh and, you know, we spoke for a few minutes and then that, you know, it ended or what have you. And then so what happens is Brian and Teresa get in the suburban and they're just chatting them up to the to the ho to the airport. And I'm thinking the back, I'm in the back seat going, these two have no idea what's happened to this man. You know what I mean? I was kind of reflecting on we have no idea what's happened to people and what the reason that they are the way that they are. And so I don't know. And that was a little bit of an aha after all week. Sometimes you have to be the positive light, having gone through cancer in our family and personally, sometimes people don't want to talk about that C word. They want to talk about something else and just lifting them up and saying, you have a really pretty gloss on today. And how's your day going? Isn't it beautiful outside right now? Makes a world of difference because they talk about it 24 hours a day. Yes. They don't want to hear about it. But you opened up and he let you in and that's special. Yeah, yeah it was. And after all of the speakers, it just felt like yeah. oh, we're, we're going to the airport. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was Mo's inspirational morning. Oh. We flew home. Oh, okay. That's my favorite part. Um, okay, so we have about 15 minutes. So we Can I all, talk on Mo's um, inspirational morning just for a second? Of course. I will just say that um, uh, John Keller and Jason Abrams got up and that we are partnering. 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 Partnering with the uh, Leukemia uh, Lymphoma organization this year and association and I, they haven't really explained like what that's going to look like they didn't ask for money then uh, but you were able to sign up and like as Keller Williams we're going to help raise as much money uh, than any other organization has ever helped raise for that um, organization so just keep like your eye out for that um, I, I think he said it like by March or April, Dana, you, uh, I don't know if you, you weren't there, sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that was one of the biggest takeaways. So they're going to partner with that. And uh, John Keller had a friend that he went to school with that had died of uh, leukemia when he graduated, I believe it was high school or college. Um, so that was one of the biggest things that we're going to see a lot of partnering with them this year. And I, um, they're going to do like within every market um center like a a partner or um a leader in that that's going to help bring recognition to that 
organization. Great, awesome. Well, we thought we'd leave with any ahas um, in general. Stephanie, did you have any overall aha? Yeah, actually I have two short things from two breakouts that I think anyone new experience could implement that I heard. Um, one was um, something that several teams across the nation have already done and been successful, and it's called the coffee conversation. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Wendy Papazan challenged her team to do the coffee conversation. They set up, I, I think it was like 84 coffee appointments amongst their team over a two-week time frame. You meet someone for coffee, and then you take the your first home book that you can buy on um, through Keller Williams, uh, through the Red Store, um, and you ask them if they need a copy or if they know of someone who would you, who would benefit from a copy. And if they say, yes, I know someone, then the, the, you ask for their information to be able to follow up with them. And everyone on the team participated and actually the transaction coordinator won the contest and got the most appointments for the team. So anyone can do it. It's coffee, talk about real estate, and then you um, give them the first home book if they will share it with someone. And then it led to um, I don't remember how many, a lot of appointments. The second thing are some open house strategies. Um, I know I did not do any open houses from 2020 to 2022. Um, and that's on my growth plan for this year, my business plan. Um, the person I heard speak did has scheduled 44 open houses per year. Um, obviously you market it with signs, the MLS and Facebook and Instagram marketing. The good thing if you're a new agent about open houses is you can do it essentially for free if you choose not to spend money on ads. You would study the active and solds in the neighborhood because you want to be the expert about that house and about that neighborhood, and that's how you're going to set yourself apart. You would invite your database through a newsletter um, or social media. You want to invite the neighbors and you know, everybody always says, why would we invite the neighbors? Well, your hope is that if they see you're outworking your competition, that if they want to list, they would also list with you. And you're setting yourself up as a neighborhood expert. And when potential buyers come in, the more crowded the open house is, the better. You do want people to sign in. However, it probably will, will feel less pushy if when you greet them, you hand them a brochure and then ask them to sign in before they leave ask them what they liked about the property. Then two hours after the open house, text them and thank them for coming. Key points, and Mo talked about this in standards, you wanna look nice, have high energy and be knowledgeable. So it doesn't matter if you've had a sale or 10 sales or 5,000 sales, you can know that home and that neighborhood so that they don't know what your experience level is. So um, that was my takeaways from two of the sessions that I went to. Those are good ones. Thank you. Getting back to basics. Yeah. Mickey? That's true. Mm -hmm. I will uh, piggyback off of the open house. I did one as well. Um, one, she made like really big signs uh, because she was from Australia and she was like, I didn't understand the metrics here. So I ended up like her signs were like real estate <laughs> signs that like go on the ground and it says happening now. Um, she does hers on Sunday from three to four because she's like, I want to create an event. I want to create urgency. Um, but she also said like time and date doesn't matter. Like, look at your market, look at what's going on around that house. Like if there's a T-ball event that's happening, like ends at four o'clock, like do yours from four to five and like put some signs that direct that way. Or if there's a farmer's market that's on Saturday and it ends at noon, like put your directionals like close to that which I thought was really smart. Um, and then the big like happening now and put them out right before your event. Um, she's like, you're not trying to get people to drive by. Like if you want sign calls, like do something that creates urgency to that. You want to create urgency for your open house. She also um, will pick like different charities. And like one that she had said was like um, the food drive and she will door knock that neighborhood 
the weekend, like that weekend or that Friday or Saturday, and she'll leave a brown paper bag that says like, hey, I'm not only having an open house, but I'm also doing a food drive. And if you bring the supplies to my open house, like that's where I can collect them. So you're not just door knocking to say like, hey, it's an open house, but like you're creating one, they want to come there, but two, like a reason to door knock, you're giving them value and they feel like they can give back. Uh, which I thought was really good. And then um, one thing that Monica Reynolds, I was in a client experience um, breakout and she said like, just go really deep with 50 people, like get 50 people in your database that you take to dinner that you love on. And you can scale this to any size business, right? She was like, if you do 50, like if you want to sell 50 houses, go 50 people deep in your database and love them because every one of them is going to refer you a piece of business that year. So if you have a bigger team, you know, everyone in your team goes 50 deep or you're, you take an admin that goes 10 deep with them and then like 20 deep. So I, I, I just, I was like, that is so easy and basic to take 50 or hundred people, depending on what your business looks like and just love them this year, like create everything. And I will, um, one last thing, it was off of um, actually everything life and real estate that I was listening to today. And he did a party with a purpose. And he did a, par a party that everyone had to pay to come. It was like a black tie affair. And he um, sponsored a charity. And I was like, that invite your 50 people to a black tie affair or like have a DJ or whatever and do a charity and have somebody come speak for that. And that's way to give value to your charity, you show that you're giving back to the community or whatever your charity may look like. Um, but then your people have a great event. Hey guys, also, <clears throat> sorry, it's Dana really quick, Nikki, I wanted to say one thing, what you said about the open houses, cause that's huge. I heard people saying that when you are door knocking for the open houses and you're inviting them to participate in a food drive or something like that, that was the way that they were getting around no solicitation in neighborhoods that have put no solicitation in their HOA. So no, just rem remember that. That's a little more ground. Yeah, love it. Okay. I have something that I think is really important that I did not know about. Um, so Gary Keller actually in 2006 established the Keller Center at Baylor University. And the Keller Center puts out a research report four times a year. And this is free. It's 100% free to us. It, it gives us great content to put on our social media, to talk to clients about. And it's incredible. Um, what is it's the So the center's team of facil, uh, faculty, staff, and graduate assistants engage with academics and consultants from around the globe to highlight the latest research in the areas of marketing and sales, management, technology, ethics, among others. So that is free to us. If you just go on to Baylor University, just type Google Baylor University, Baylor University, Keller Williams, the Keller Center will pop up and Gary Keller funds this. It's part of the marketing department. Oh, I get it. I've so, been doing it for a couple of years. That's I good. think this is incredible. Yeah. That's a good hack. Yeah. Brian. Uh, so this is my first family reunion where I got to actually take, not just go solo, but take team members with me, which is incredibly rewarding stuff to watch them not go through that experience and then as they come out the back end of it just the uh, their minds are unlocked how much more they feel part of this community speaking of community that's one of the things i did while i was there i joined the kw talent community there because it's incredibly purposeful for me and what my goals are and stuff and it's a skill to be able to recruit hire um train lead <laughs> and retain talent so I'm very purposeful about all that. So a lot of classes I went to dealt with that. And one of the keywords I took away from that was alignment. It's that word. All things have to be alignment. It's true across almost everything that we learned there. And so are your actions aligned with what your goals are? Are your are your people, are all of you aligned with your mission, vision, values, beliefs, and perspectives for your team as well? 
are you aligned with the goals of your team members and stuff? Are those with the team itself? So they're going in the same direction. Are you aligned with the different feed sources that you're working with as well? So you're not working in all sorts of different things and nobody's become a master of anything in that process, but you're just going in different directions. So alignment was pretty big. That makes complete sense. You're gonna say something? Oh, no. Okay. Um, well, this is my very first family reunion and there were way <laughs> more people there than I thought there would be. I mean, if anything, I said, to one of our agents in the office, I said, so I'm going to see like a thousand people. <laughs> no way you're going to see like 15, like in 20. Each class. In each class. Yeah. Yes. And so the energy was awesome. The inspiration was awesome. Um, the ability to be so close to all of the leaders, the true leaderships of KW was awesome. Um, I end up taking away all kinds of stuff um, and think I want to implement it. Like, and then I just know I have to pull back a little bit so that it's efficient. But one big takeaway that I think some of the very, very successful market centers are doing from a team leader perspective is every single person, but there were some market centers that every single person from admin to DOFI to brokers had 201 plus in their database, every single person and a level of the entire market center working on recruiting, agent count, profit share and growing the business. So that seems very, very simple. Doable. Doable. Yeah. Um, it was my first family reunion as well. But I absolutely loved it. I have like a growth and learning mindset. So I love conferences like this is right up my alley. So had a great time. I will give you like my, I could say so many things, but the top three things that I took away and also that I really focused on while I was there to grow my business, I think will be applicable for everyone. So I'm going to share that with you. The first thing piggybacks off of what Ryan said, which is joining a community. Um, I'm also part of a community in sports and entertainment. Um, he joined a community when his team members joined the community while we were there. Um, it's just a great way to make the largest real estate company by agent count feel small, um, find your people, build your community. And my business has just really grown from that over the last year. So focusing on that to profit share, shout out to Dana, the queen of profit share, kind of a, a breakout that she did. And I'm just so inspired. So working on growing that this year. Um, and then also leverage. I sent, attended some breakouts, just making sure that the, the business partners that we have, whether it's title um, mortgage contractors that they're also pouring back into my business. So with title, whether they're doing marketing for us, um, maybe JVing with them, um, just making sure that the people that I'm loyal to are also being loyal to me. Um, Those are great. You picked up a lot for your first one. Yeah. I could talk about that. Hey, yeah. Emily. Yeah. Uh, there was some, I think it was either Molly or Gary. I can't remember, but he said that um all of our vendors ride on the bus to the closing and they should want to ride on more buses and I was like yeah. that's why we need to pour into them and make sure they are pouring back into us <laughs> yeah yeah okay Teresa well very quickly I had written down communities as well um I joined two of them actually I joined three of them I joined Wellness, um, Real Estate Planner, and the Wealth Building one, but we're going to be bringing more communities to our office um, and telling you guys more about it because I think it's a really good way to grow your business with like-minded people from around the country and from around the world. So it's basically a community of agents that are interested in these certain areas, like Emily in sports and entertainment. Brian in what did you do? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, in talent for sure. So yeah, that was a big takeaway. And then of course for me, the biggest takeaway is the mindset. We're going into a shift, but you don't if your mindset, if you've made up your mind that you know what you're doing and you're gonna go do it, you're gonna be okay. And Kel, the best news is Keller Williams has never been in a better position to help you do that. Their systems in command are up and running now. I can't say it enough. They're free. Like Emily here, we had a little contest in the office today to see who had the most number of contacts in their database 
set up on a smart plan and she won because she had over 1300. Yeah. Well, thank you everyone. We want to respect everyone's time. I think it is almost two o'clock on the nose. So, uh, yes, question. Family reunions or mega camp? We had to pick one. That's a good oh. question. Oh. Next year is in Vegas. So <laughs> who, who asked that? What production level? New age? Is it new agent or produce or producing agent? Line, or Jennifer's asking. Jennifer Sack on the Tracy's Chambers team. team. Tracy's team, Chambers. Yeah, so she, she's producing definitely. They're, 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 they're similar but different. <laughs> um, I think family reunion is a little bit more to kind of handle the first time than Mega Camp is. Um, gosh. Dana. Dana, isn't mega mega camp more um, workshop oriented, where you're actually masterminds? And yeah. Stuff like that. Yes, it is. You don't get as much Gary um, or like bigger sessions, you know. So I don't know. I mean, they're they're both they're both great. So I've, I don't been, know. I've been to both personally, mm -hmm. and I would say family reunion. Yeah, I. Think I, I I kind of would too. Um, I mean, I go to both. And at the beginning of the year, I think that's when you really need it because when you walk out of there, you're like, get out of my way. And yeah. I, got it. I mean, it is so Motivating. different. Like mega agent camp is in the fall. You know, it's, we, we, we've had a long summer. You yeah. know, what do we need to see? What do we need to change? But family reunion, it's like, we got this. No, we're unstoppable. Yeah, after family reunion, I've never seen so many people posting LFG. <laughs> the acronym, if you don't, I, I, I did not post it, but I saw it a lot. <laughs> and it's, and it's, it's because of that, Lori, I feel like everybody's like pumped up, ready to yes. go. Um, quick question. Um, I got text somebody who wants to know what Thrive 25 means. I just put that in the chat. Um, and oh. so if you are in the room, sorry, you might not have been able to see it, but uh, Thrive 25 is the new kind of vision from KW, the goal by 2025 to have 100,000 of our agents averaging 18 sides. We already are. We surpassed Remax in the most production per side, um, but I think it's like seven. And so the goal is to get that to 18. Uh, goal number two is all market centers are million dollar market centers. And goal number three is we have a hundred thousand agent millionaires inside the company all by 2025. Right. <laughs> great job, guys. Good job. Okay, thank you. Everyone have a great day. Appreciate it. Thank you. 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 Thank you.